If you're sharing your Airtable database with other people, then you want to make sure you give them the right level of permission. There are four different levels of permission in Airtable, but the two most common levels are creator and editor. So in this video, I'm going to be walking through the differences between these two and why you need to be really thoughtful about giving the right level of permission to your different team members. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest to you and you want to learn more about how we do that and check out some of the free things that we've built to help you get up to speed, definitely check out the links that I'll include uh, below in the description of this video. But without further ado, let's get to the meat of this video and we're going to be talking about the two bigger permission levels that come with Airtable. So let's just jump into my screen and take a look at this. So this is just a database or base that I pulled off of the, um, the Airtable uh, universe, right? So this is one of those free templates that you can download and get access to for your own manipulation and your own needs, right? So in here, what I've done, this is my normal account that I work with my clients from. Uh, this is my, you know, my professional account, and I can see that by looking in the upper right corner where it says account, this is indicating to me the owner of this account. So of course, if I click here, I can drill into my account and there's a bunch of things at, you know, a new, a new tab opens up and there's a bunch of things here where I can update the way my name is shown, the email that I'm using, my password, you know, all my account stuff, right? Now, at the same time, I have another window open. I have an incog window open over here, and you'll notice that in the upper right corner, two things. One, I'm in an incognito window, so that's allowing me to have, you know, essentially two things open under two different uh, names or, or logins at the same time. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that the picture here is completely different, and that's because I've logged into this from my personal uh, email. So let's flip back into Airtable really quickly. This is in my creator mode. When you go to share your database with somebody, you have two choices. You can either share the database, like just that base, or you can share the whole folder that the base is in. Now, if you share the whole folder, then really what's happening is you're giving every, you're giving access away to every single database inside of that folder of databases, which we call a workspace. So I'm going to be talking about sharing at the database level. So if I were to click this inside of the database itself, I'm sharing the database and not the folder of databases, right? So in here, you'll notice that there are two collaborators, right? There's a workspace collaborator. This person, of course, has permission over the entire workspace. That's the folder. And that's the account that I'm logged in on. Now, the other one, as I mentioned, is my, uh, my personal account. And I'm just using my logo uh, here to kind of showcase that they're different. And you'll notice that the level of permission is very different here. It's the editor level of permissions. So when we look at these four different levels of permission, these are the different levels that we can grant somebody. There can only be, I believe, one owner at a time, but we can give away, you know, other levels of permission. Creator and editor tend to be those two levels of permission that we see the most commonly, although read only definitely plays a part as well. But just note that the big difference is if you look at this, you know, at, at a high level, it says that you can, uh, the creator can fully configure and edit the base, and then the editor can edit records and views, but they cannot configure tables or fields. So let's dive in and really take a look at the big differences here. So if I flip out, again, remember, I am in the owner or creator level of permissions. This is my uh, professional account that I'm using. And one thing you'll notice is that up here at the top, I can add a field. And this allows me to, you know, just add new fields or new tables to the database structure. So I can have a new example field. And whoops, it'd be helpful if I spelled field. Uh, and once that's done and saved, you know, whatever I put in here or anyone else puts in here will be visible. But if I flip back into, again, now I've just flipped into my personal account, which has editor level privileges, you'll notice that I don't have the option to hit a plus over here and add new uh, fields. I can not even edit this field. So when I go to bring this drop down, you'll see that as an editor, I only have these five levels of permission, right? Flipping back into the other one, I have 
a bunch of different things that I can do here, right? I can customize the field, I can rename it. I mean, all of these things that I can do to change the way the database is structured. So what I like to think of this is, or as, is that this person essentially has admin level privileges. They can come in and they can change the underlying architecture. Remember, this is creator level privileges that I'm talking about. But if I'm using the editor level of privileges, all I can really do is arrange the way that I want to look at that data. Okay, so let's flip back into that uh, editor level. So again, I'm gonna flip back into my, uh, my personal account here, which this base has been shared with. This has editor level privileges, and there's not a whole lot, as I mentioned, that you can do here. But I can change the views uh, to my liking. So as an editor, not only can I come in and add example data, let's say I put in example data, uh, and I'll put in example two. Now again, I'm adding this in as an editor. And of course, if I flip back into the other account, that is the, uh, the professional account, this is the person who has the creator level privileges. Of course, they instantly see the changes that were made, right? So as an editor, I can edit the data. I can make changes to the underlying data structure. I just can't edit the structure of the database. Now, the other thing I can do, let's flip back into the editor. So back into the editor again, the other thing I can do is create new views. So let's say as an editor, I wanted to make a Kanban view here. And let's see, I've stacked these by, let's go Let's go into the, the customizing here or stacked. I've stacked them by angle here, which is one of the fields. Uh, and then I've added some customization. Maybe I wanna bring in the setup or the scenes or the shot importance, these different things. Uh, I can do that. I can even add colors, whatever I can do to the view, so long as it doesn't change the underlying structure of the database. Again, the view is really just the way that we're looking at the data and it doesn't impact the underlying structure or architecture. So I can make all those changes. I can rename this view and I'll rename this, I'll rename it uh, renamed personal. And the reason I wanna do this is, let's suppose that for me, my particular job as the editor inside of this database, Let's say that I needed this particular view in order to perform my work function. Well, I wouldn't want other people coming in and perhaps making changes to that view. And this is where personal views comes into play. Now, personal views, we can access by clicking on this little icon right here. And you see that right now the view is visible and configurable, configurable by collaborators. So if I click this, it's on the collaborative view. Now I only have the option to make a new collaborative view or to make this view a personal view. So if I were to create a personal view, what happens? Well, first and foremost, when I go to pull down this view now, it has this individual person icon next to it. And it is now a personal view under my account. Okay, what does that mean? Well, there's some really cool functionality with this and it has to do with the fact that, again, as the person who created this personal view, I might not wanna share my workflow with everybody or maybe I want this view set up in just a way that I need to use it and I don't want other people messing with that. So flipping back to the creator, let's take a look at what the creator sees now that the editor made this a personal view. So I'm gonna flip back into my creator view here. This is my professional account. And when I look at the different views, you'll see that there's one over here that's kind of like grayed out a little bit and it says renamed personal. That is the name of the view that we gave it. And also you'll see that this icon here is the same icon as the account uh, picture for the uh, person who made this a personal view. Remember that I made this a personal view with my uh, account that has my logo as an icon. And so that's showing up right here to indicate to everybody else on the team that this is my personal view. And as you see here, when I mouse over it, I get this little pop-up that says that this personal view belongs to Gareth Pronovost. That's the name associated with the account that I'm using. And so if I were to click here and say, show everyone's personal views, it shows me right here that this view is owned by Gareth. And if I were to flip into here, I see this view, but you'll notice that I don't get the, I don't have the ability to make any changes to this view because this view, even though I'm the creator here, this view was created by another user and made personal. So a couple of things to note about this. Even though I'm a creator here and this view was made personal by an editor, I can still see the view, but I cannot alter it. 
Now, you might think that that's a limitation. It's really not. All it means is that I can't mess up the workflow or the way that this person set up the view. What I can do though, if I really like this view or I want to make some tweaks to it for my own needs is I can duplicate the view. So I can always come in here and create a copy of this view. Even though I'm not the owner of the personal view, I can create a copy of it. And as you see, it just takes on the name renamed personal copy. And then I can make whatever changes I want. And now when you see, there will be both the personal view that was created by this editor. And then here's the copy that I made that everyone has access to. Now, one other thing that you'll note between the differences between creator and editor, as the creator, when I look at this, I see the collaborative view option and the personal view option, but I also get the locked view option. And the cool thing about locked views is I can lock this down. And if I want to say why, I can, I can say why. So I can say this is locked for automation, perhaps. That's one of the more common reasons that we tend to create locked views. Now, once I've created that, let's flip back into the editor's view. So now I'm in the editor level permissions. And when I look at the views, I can see this view here, but now I can't make changes to this view. So having a locked view is a little similar to having a personal view with the exception that the locked view is going to show up in everybody's uh, feed, if you will. Whereas the personal view, if I flip back over, the personal view only shows up and it's grayed out if I have this checked. So as soon as I uncheck the show everyone's personal views, it doesn't clutter it up. So this is another advantage to why you might want to use a personal view. It's not by default, it's not going to be showing up in everybody's you know view feed, if you will, and it's going to help them streamline, streamline their own workflows. So anyhow, I hope you learned a lot about the differences between views and permissions. Also, be sure to note that there is a lot of value around not giving someone creator privileges because they cannot then change the underlying architecture of the database. That's the biggest reason you'd keep somebody at an editor level, but they still get 99% of the functionality that you would have as a creator. So I hope you found that to be useful, but definitely let me know any questions you might have and be sure to check out all the different things we've put together to help you get up and running fast. As always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, we have a lot of resources that we've put together on our site, so swing on by and see how we can help. We have a blog that includes free content every week. We also built an Airtable free crash course that'll get you up to speed in under two weeks. And if you're looking for something more advanced, you can book some time to have a discussion with me. I will hop on a Zoom call with you and we can talk about what your needs are and how our company might be able to help. So if that's of interest, swing on by. Look forward to connecting with you soon.